Availability is actually the combination of the inherent reliability of the hardware and the resources that you be, expect to be able to apply to support the hardware. So obviously the more reliable the hardware is, the less resources that you would need to be, to, in order to have to maintain the hardware. There's a cost trade-off with that in the design phase in that in trying to make the hardware more reliable, you're increasing cost during the design and development phase with the expectation that you'll be able to reduce support costs. In order to be able to do a good job of making those trades, you've got to be able to measure what you think you're going to get out of it in reduced support costs by improving the inherent reliability of the hardware. And so being able to have a set of, of tools, of, of data tools, that can give you an indication of how much resources and how they're going to vary depending on the reliability of the hardware, that's going to allow that project team to make better upfront decisions. An example from Station is on the regenerative life support system. When the original requirements were written, they were focused on crew time, which is a resource. They did not bring up the resupply up mass and volume that was going to be required. So the system was designed. It is a very good system. We're operating with it today, but we very quickly learned that it was going to be very intensive in terms of how much up mass was going to be required to continue to support that system. And indeed, there was a redesign done because of that. And there was a, there was a retype, recycle filter tank assembly that was, became an advanced recycle filter tank assembly so that instead of having to resupply these tanks every month or so, you were able to empty these tanks on orbit and continue to reuse them, drastically reducing your up mass requirements. So if that consideration had been in place in the requirements phase, requirements development phase, we would have had that initially rather having, than having to go back and retrofit it. With the design that we had initially, in order to get the availability that we had to have in order to keep six crew members alive on board, we were going to have to have a lot of support resources. Those tanks were going to have to come up to be able to, to be change, changed out once a month, and they were large beer barrel keg sized tanks. And so in order to achieve the availability that we had to have was going to be support resource intensive. Whereas if we had designed in initially the ability to empty and reuse those tanks on orbit, we would have, from the beginning, from system activation, we would have had the reduced level of resources that we're now being able to, to, to transition to today. With exploration, since there is no resupply, then the design considerations for availability have to be based on, I can only live on whatever it is that I can bring with me. And so when I design the hardware, that hardware is gonna have to have support resources with it. And if I can design that hardware to minimize the, res the support resources, I've just increased the availability of the overall system as well as having reduced the overall footprint required of the vehicle. So from a requirement standpoint, in order to drive those trades, if you have an availability requirement in your upfront requirements documentation, such that the design teams have a requirement that they're going to have to verify to and know they have to verify to, and so that consideration is in their design trades up front, then your likelihood of success goes way up in terms of having a vehicle that has got a minimum footprint but is still able to provide the availability needed to keep the crew alive to the destination and back.